In chemistry, different substances come together to give a particular product. While you were in secondary school, your teacher must have told you that an acid will react with a base to give salt and water. But we have a whole lot of chemical reactions in chemistry. If you are given this set of reactions from A to D, and you are asked to tell what type of reaction this is, will you be able to answer? If you are unable to, this is what we are about to talk about in this class today. Welcome back to Primer's Privacity, and we want to talk about oxidation and reduction reactions. So this class is going to be a bit of series of classes, and I would like you to follow through after the part one. After every classes we have, we'll be solving some questions together, and you should be able to get your own past questions as well, so you solve on your own. Then if you have any form of question, you can post it in the comment section or you WhatsApp the number you have on your screen to get your questions across. Then we'll be able to solve it all together. So in this class, we look at the different types of reactions. We'll focus more on oxidation and reduction reactions, the definition of oxidation and reduction, and various examples. We'll look at oxidation numbers and how to determine the oxidation numbers for different elements we have in chemistry. Then after that, we'll focus on redox reaction, which simply means reduction and oxidation reaction. But in a new form, we'll look at redox reaction. And this redox reaction will be able to balance what we call a redox equation. Just like the same way you balance equation in stoichiometry, there are some equations that you will have to balance to in an acidic or a basic medium when you're talking about redox reactions. We will look at all these reactions one after the other. So please pay a full attention to this class. So first, let's look at all the different types of reactions we have in chemistry. One is combination reaction. A combination reaction is when one substance reacts with another substance to give a particular product. For example, let's assume we have hydrogen gas reacting with chlorine gas to give HCl. So if you balance this equation, you have 2 HCl. So this hydrogen gas directly combines with HCl to give us hydrogen chloride gas. So this is called a combination reaction. Now, there's another type of reaction called a displacement reaction. Displacement reaction happens when one substance displaces or sends away another substance from its salt. For example, let's say I have zinc reacting with copper sulfate. Then the blue solution of the copper sulfate gradually disappears as a result of zinc displacing copper in this reaction. So we can have an equation like zinc sulfate plus copper at the end of the reaction. So looking at this reaction, this is called a displacement reaction because zinc was able to displace copper, that is, send away copper from, the, from copper salt. Now, when you're talking about displacement reaction, it is very, very important to understand what we call electrochemical series. Electrochemical series is a table that talks about how easily an element can donate or give out its electron. In this series, one of these elements can displace the other from its salt. If you look at the zinc and copper we're talking about here, you will see that zinc is above copper in the electrochemical series. Now, that means that zinc can easily displace copper in an equation. If I have a solution that has calcium and maybe zinc together in an equation, then calcium can easily displace zinc in such reactions. Let's look at another form of reaction that we can just take for as an hypothetical example. Let's say I have um, calcium reacting with zinc sulfate. In this case, I can have calcium sulfate plus zinc. Now, the calcium being above in the electrochemical series is able to displace zinc from its salt. So this is called a displacement reaction. And don't forget in the electrochemical series, the ions that are above are likely to displace the other substances from their equation. Another thing is that when you look at group 7 elements, going from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine, when you look at these reactions, fluorine is the most electronegative element. Fluorine can displace these other substances from their salt. For example, let's say I have fluorine 
plus potassium bromide. Now, I can have an equation like this, potassium fluoride and bromine gas. So looking at this equation we have, fluorine is able to displace, fluorine is able to displace potassium from this equation. So I can have two here, I can have two here. So if you look at this reaction, it is also called a displacement reaction. Now, let's look at this reaction. Is it possible if I have chlorine gas plus potassium fluoride? Now, in this equation, is this equation possible? Are you going to produce potassium chloride and fluorine gas? Is it possible? No, because fluorine can displace chlorine, but chlorine cannot displace fluorine in a chemical equation. So this is what we are talking about in this case when we're talking about displacement reaction. Another form of reaction we talk about is decomposition reaction. When you're talking about decomposition reaction, it's just like opposite of um, direct combination that I talked about initially. Decomposition reaction is a sort splitting to give two products. It can be two or more products. Let's say we have CaCO3 solid. This sort is going to split. When it splits, it gives us CaO plus CO2. So from the word decomposition, it means it splits. So this guy splits to give us these two products. So this is a form of decomposition reaction. Now, when you're looking at this reaction, so when you combine a substance with another substance to give a single substance like this, we call it combination reaction. But when you go from a single substance to give two or more products, we call it decomposition reaction. So quickly, let's look at the next one. The next type of reaction is double decomposition reaction. In a double decomposition reaction, it is actually a form of precipitation reaction. You take two salts, two soluble salts, mix them together. The two, ions, the two salts exchange their ions. When they exchange their ions, they give a precipitate and one soluble salt. So for example, this is like what I'm saying. If I have salt AB reacting with salt CD, they exchange their ions that they have. So you can have AD plus BC. In this case now, AB had to split, CD splitted, and they had to add them together to give us the product. Now, let me give you an hypothetical example. Let's say lead nitrate, PBNO3, reacts with NaCl. This will give us the lead will give it salt, which will be, we, we give it ion, which will be lead 2 plus, PB2 plus, and you will have NO3 minus. So if you write the ionic form, this is what you're going to have, PB2 plus and NO3 minus. Then this will give Na plus and Cl minus. Now the Cl minus will go to the PB2 plus, while the Na plus will go to the NO3 minus. So this is called a double decomposition. NaCl decomposes. PBNO3 decomposes, so they exchange their ions. Now you are going to have a product like PBCL2. This PBCL2 is a precipitate. It is a solid. So this is called precipitation reaction also. And after the PBCL2, then what do we have? We have NaNO3. So this reaction is called a double decomposition. This is a single decomposition. This is a double decomposition. And we usually use this process when we're trying to produce an insoluble salt. So another form of reaction we have that looks more like it is called thermal dissociation. There's a reaction called thermal dissociation. Thermal dissociation is actually a reversible thermal decomposition. Like if I have ammonium chloride, for example, this ammonium chloride can reversibly give me ammonia and HCl. So this can split, decompose, to give me ammonia and HCl. The ammonia and the HCl can also come together to give me the NH4Cl. So we call this thermal decomposition because the decomposition is actually reversible. And it is thermal because it requires heat to decompose. So that is what we are talking about on thermal decomposition. Now, the major form of reaction we'll be focusing on is actually oxidation reduction reaction. Aside that, there is still a whole lot of reactions we talk about. When a substance burns completely in oxygen, then we say that is 
combustion reaction. For example, now I can have carbon burning in oxygen to give me carbon four oxide. So a substance burning in oxygen to give carbon four oxide. So this substance burns in oxygen to give carbon four oxide. This is called a combustion reaction. So today we have talked about displacement reaction. We have talked about decomposition reaction. We have talked about combination reaction. We have talked about thermal dissociation. And now this is combustion. Generally, you all know that an acid will react with a base to give salt and water. Those are special kind of reactions. So we have four major types of reactions we've talked about today. So we'll be solving questions on this. In the next class, I'll be going back to oxidation and reduction. Unless I forget, when you're talking about decomposition, I need you to note something because we always asked in exams about this. When you decompose the carbonates, so let's check this. When you decompose the carbonates of this salt, potassium and sodium, you do not get anything. Like you try to decompose K2CO3. So this is potassium carbonate. When you decompose it, you do not get anything. But when you decompose the salts, the carbonates of these guys, then you are going to get the oxide of the metal and CO2. So let's decompose CaCO3. Then I will get CaO and CO2. So be careful when you see reactions like this. So when you decompose CaCO3, you get CaO and CO2. That is also a decomposition reaction. Another thing I need you to note quickly before we move on to the part two of the class is that when you decompose nitrates, nitrates, if I decompose sodium nitrate aside lithium, I will get sodium nitrite plus oxygen gas. Please, let's be watchful of these equations. When I decompose sodium nitrate, I will get sodium nitrite. That's NaNO2. So I'll get sodium nitrite plus oxygen. When I decompose any of these guys' nitrates, like if I decompose lead nitrate, PbNO3, I will get PbO, a brown NO2, plus oxygen gas. So when you see the brown films NO2, then you are decomposing a salt like lead nitrate. So if you decompose any of these nitrates, these are the products you will get. But if you decompose any of this one, if you decompose silver nitrates majorly, you are going to get, let's say I decompose AgNO3. I will get the metal, silver, then I will get NO2, and I will get oxygen gas. So you have to take note of this type of decomposition reactions. So whenever you decompose them, these are the products you will get. At the end of this class, I'll be dropping some questions for you now. So please, take your time to solve these questions. I will also take some questions from your jam pass questions. We will solve them together. Then you will see what we are doing in this class. So please, make sure you leave your comments in the section if you have any questions. Now, in the next class part, so I'll be going to oxidation and reduction reaction proper. We'll look at the definition and other things I talked about. So please, stay tuned. And make sure you subscribe to the channel to continue to get updates on our academic activities. God bless you as you take part in it.